Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we've got to get that stand built so we can get those 275 gallon fish tanks on the other side of the fish room to begin moving fish around. So stay tuned, we're going to show you how to do it. What I wanted to do is point out some things that I think will be helpful. Alright, so we're going to be building the stands today and one of the things we have to consider is how high we want the stands to be. So I've got a stand that I need to build for a double 75. Let me take you over here. So I've already got plans for one. I'll show you how I did that in a second. But I wanted to improve upon this. When I originally built this stand, what I did is I stood against the wall and I wanted to see how high the second tank needed to be. And I wanted the second tank, about the middle of the second tank, to be at my eye level. That helped determine everything else. Now for the bottom tank, what I wanted was a stand where I could still see the tank and while I'm standing up and not have to sit on the floor. And so that's what determined how high I came off the floor. I also wanted about 12 inches of working space in between the tank. Now after having worked with the stand for a little bit, there's a couple things I realized. Thing number one, I don't need that much space between the bottom tank and the top tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shave three inches off of that space. I'm going to lower the top tank by one inch and I'm going to raise the bottom tank by two inches. And so on the other side of the fish room that's going to be a slightly different stand but I'm still going to use two by sixes because I think that worked out very well. It's very sturdy. It's built like a tank. And so I will show you how I plan for that. Okay so these are the drawings that I used to make the 75. You can see here I've drawn out all the dimensions. I know what I'm building, a double single stand. I know the wood that I'm using. And then over here, I have the lengths of each of the pieces that I need to cut. And so I just kind of rough sketch it out. It's important to consider the actual length of the boards anytime you're figuring out the overall dimensions of your stand. Then I go through and I look at how many boards I'm actually going to need. So these are pretty much the way I'm going to be. I buy 96 inch boards, eight foot boards. And so now I know I need 11 of them and that's going to get me what I need. So I lay it out on paper. A lot of times people forget to do this and they don't realize how much they need and they run out. All right, so I made my trip to Lowe's. Next step is we've got to turn this wood into a fish tank stand. Now one little problem I ran into, went there and all the eight foot boards looked awful. There were cracks, they were warped. So I highly recommend when you go and buy wood for your stands, make sure the boards are straight, both when you stand them on end and when you look at them from the side. And make sure there's no big cracks in the wood or anything like that, which would compromise the integrity of the stand. So I went with 10 foot boards. So I got a little bit of recalculating to do before I start the cuts, but we're gonna turn this into a stand. All right, everybody, so important. First couple of times you do your measurements on your first pieces of wood, make sure you are very careful. And then I usually mark the piece just with the length that I need. And then I'll measure from one end and then depending on how I've got the wood laid out, I've got another piece here. But the reason we're gonna do this carefully is these pieces are going to be used as the template for all the rest of the cuts for that size. That way, even if they're off by, let's say an eighth of an inch, they are all the same length. And if I've done my job, hopefully they're not gonna be off by an eighth of an inch. But it's important, make sure you measure those first pieces very carefully and then use those pieces as your template so you don't have to keep measuring the same length over and over again. Okay, so this is what I was talking about here with using your first cuts as your templates for the rest. So this is my 63 inch piece. This is a 30 and a half inch piece. Now all I have to do is come down here and draw the line and I know that this piece will then be the same as the piece I've already cut. I can do the same thing over here with my 30 and a half and then this area that you see here I'll actually get two 11 and a half inch pieces out of that and I'll, I have 11 and a half inch template that I'll use to do that after I've cut these two pieces off. So now, for those four sizes, I don't have to remeasure again. And that's a big time saver. And once again, it ensures that all your pieces are going to be the same size. All right, everyone, just wanted to point something out real fast. This is gonna be really hard to do with one hand. But you see that I've got that line drawn there. And one of the things you really wanna be careful of 
is you want to make sure that when you are cutting the wood that you account for the width of the blade when you cut. And so that blade's actually going to take a little bit of the wood apart or a little bit of the wood with it. And so we're going to want to move this thing over a little bit. Let's see how we do here. And I want to be so that the blade is pretty much right on the line. But you also need to understand that that blade is, you know, depending on the size of the blade, 16th maybe uh, inch thick, maybe eighth of an inch. So there we've got the blade, and I know this is hard to see, but that blade is going to come down and we're going to ensure that we have exactly a 16 inch board. We're going to lose a little tiny bit in between this side and this side, now it doesn't matter because that's scrap, but if this were another piece and you had, let's say, a 32 inch board and you wanted to get two 16 inch pieces out of that, you wouldn't. Uh, they would be slightly smaller than 16 inches because the blade itself is producing all of that. And so you just have to keep that in mind. All right, everyone, so we got the wood cut. We've got all what we need. Uh, now it's just a matter of assembling this thing. But before we do that, just something I want to point out. You see here on the edges of all this wood, we've got this fraying. You're definitely going to want to take some kind of a file and file that off. One, because when you go to, if you paint this later on, it's going to be a pain because these things aren't going to allow you to paint it very easily. So take a file, get that off of there. Uh, the other thing is this is just a splinter waiting to happen. So get rid of those things before you start the assembly process. And we're going to look at that next. So all the wood is cut. And now it's just a matter of putting the thing together. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and lay this out. This is going to be uh, the top of the stand where the top fish tank is going to be. And you can see here, I'm putting this in the kitchen floor just because the kitchen floor is a little bit flatter than the basement floor. So this is how it's going to work. I've got a couple of these 16 inch pieces here. And then I have the 63 inch pieces. Now you may be asking yourself, why do I need a 63 inch long uh, piece when the tank itself is only 48 inches wide. And the reason for that is you have to account for the thickness of this piece of wood here, and then there's going to be uprights that come off of this side, and that is going to be uh, five and a half inches, because it's a two by six. So you have to account for the inch and a half for this piece, the five and a half inches, which will become clear as we get into this build, the five and a half inches that come into here, and then there will be another 16 inch piece on the other side of a five and a half inch upright, and that's actually where the tank is going to rest on this double stand. If you're only building a single stand, you could just build it all the way out to here, and then this would be roughly a 49 inch wide stand, but this is a double rack, so it's gotta be wider. Now, I'm using two by sixes because it works out well. It's a 75 gallon stand, and that means you could have around 700 to 750 pounds uh, on both of these, on both of the levels. So that's, it's pretty heavy. And we want to make sure that we have a lot of, uh, you know, a strong stand that's going to withhold, uh, withstand that kind of weight. So that's why we're doing, uh, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I'll show you this in a couple minutes after I've got it all put together. Uh, the one thing I will do is as I connect, as I, as I do these, I connect these together, I am going to use, I'm not, I don't use glue and I do pre-drill my holes. Okay, so then when we do this, I'm going to use this screw here. It is a two and a half inch by 10. Uh, and it's got this star shaped part here. And this is, to me, is very important because if you just use the regular Phillips head type of screw, you are gonna strip those most likely uh, quite often. They're very frustrating. These things are awesome. Uh, it comes with a bit, so let me show you that. Uh, in the box I buy them in, it comes with a bit that fits in perfectly. It is a lot less likely that you're going to strip the screw when you use these things. It just makes life a ton easier. And here, these are the screws that I use. I get these from Lowe's. Uh, they're about $14, $15 a box. I usually just buy two boxes of these. Um, I don't use all, I don't use both, but these things are, are really great and they've been working good so far. Okay, one other thing I recommend for sure is get yourself some of these uh, corner bracket that holds the wood together. 
I got these from Harbor Freight. They were cheap. Uh, I would never do that again. These are basically garbage. I bought four of them. These two are left, and even these two, the little parts that you that you screw to clamp the things on, a couple of them are stripped, so if you tighten them a little bit too tight, then they just kind of pop, and you have to retighten them again. So if you're going to buy these to hold this in like this, that's a great idea. Just spend the extra money and get some that are of good quality. Uh, I am going to pre-drill holes before I actually insert the screws. And the reason I do that is, especially with two by sixes, and especially as you get close to the edge here, they have a tendency to split. So do yourself a favor, it takes a little bit of extra time, but trust me, once you split one of these larger pieces of wood and you have to go back out and buy another two by six, and then come back and do the cutting again, it just isn't worth it. So I highly recommend, even with the screws that say they don't need to be pre-drilled, I do it anyway, because I've, I've split enough pieces of wood to know that it's just not worth the extra time uh, to have to go out and get more wood and do the cutting all over again. So I will be pre-drilling and I'll show you what it looks like as soon as I'm done. All right, so here we have the boards that are put together and we've got the screws. I kind of, I just barely countersunk them. They just kind of sink in the wood. Uh, the wood's soft enough where it will do that. Uh, it is provided that you pre-drill the holes, it's not gonna crack. At least I haven't found that to be the case. So we see here, uh, we've got our piece. Again, this is the top part of the frame. Now I need to do the next one like this and that will hold the bottom tank. And then we can get started on the uprights and get this thing together. All right, so the next step in the process is we have to get the uprights all in. And so the important thing here is to make sure that they're level. And so I'm gonna have Luke here in a minute. He's gonna make sure that he holds it straight. We'll have a level. Uh, and so these things are just going to get screwed into the outside of the frame out there. And as soon as we get those in, we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, everyone, so I got the four uprights. They are in. And then down here, I'll show you what I did. Uh, in terms of screwing them in, I got four screws over here. And then I do two from the side over here. And that will be more than enough to secure those because the one thing we need to understand about these uprights is they're not going to be the uprights supporting the weight. They're almost like just a vertical frame. The next step, I'm going to be installing the actual pieces of wood that support the vast majority of the weight. So it's not the screws that are gonna be supporting the weight, it's the wood itself. And I'll show you that. Okay, so these are the actual pieces that are going to be supporting the weight. And so I've got additional two by sixes that have been screwed into these longer pieces. And the pieces I've screwed in are only 30 and a half inches long because that is the space that I needed between the bottom tank and the top tank. And so the top tank is actually gonna be supported on that frame after we turn it over. So everything's being done upside down right now. And then the bottom tank will be resting on a frame that's going to go in this re region right here. Uh, as soon as I get the other four sides like this, we will then be able to put the second frame that's going to actually house the bottom tank on this larger piece. All right, everyone. So you can see I've got the bracing up. Uh, the, again, the wood that you see here, the shorter pieces, are the ones where the tank is really going to be resting on. That's going to be the support pieces. It's really not the screws. It's the wood. Of course, these things are screwed into the wood, but that's gonna be supporting all the weight in the downward motion. So next step is we need to get the next frame that's similar to this one down here on top of here. Get that all screwed in because that will hold the bottom tank. All right, so there you have it. Now we've got the second part of the frame. This is again where the bottom tank is going to rest. And right now that's just kind of resting on those uprights. I just need to screw them in and then we can go and add the bottom supports here and here like we did down here with the one over here and the one here and then we need the cross bracing along here and at that point this will be done and all we have to do then is paint the tank or paint the tank then all we have to do is paint the stand and we will be ready to go
Okay, so I wanted to show you something. I'm not worried. The level is on here right now, not because I want the stand to be level, because the ground that's on is not level right now anyway. So you can see it's kind of shaking. But I'm using this level to make sure that the brace I have here is completely flush with the cross piece here, because ultimately the tank is going to be resting on this piece and these pieces back here. So if that is not completely flush, that's when you start to have the frames of the fish tanks twist. And that is incredibly important to make sure that those things are flush. So when you're putting in these pieces here, again, just make sure they're completely level with the pieces that you have where the fronts and the backs that things are going to rest. Okay, everyone. So this is the finished stand that we have here. Let me try to back up a little bit. It's kind of hard to do because I am walking over all kinds of stuff. But there you see the stand. And it's still going to be, need to be painted. And I'm going to do that here shortly and I'll show you what that looks like as well. But we've got our stand here that will hold 275 gallon fish tanks. Which will actually go on the other side. It's not going to stay in this room but it's where I had to build it because it's where I had the room. So there you have it. All right, everyone, so I wanted to show you the paint that we use to paint most of our stands. Uh, it is this Valspar gloss, and it's been pretty great so far. The gloss is nice because if something gets a little messy or a little wet, it's just easier to maintain than like maybe a flat paint would be. But this stuff, we picked it up from Lowe's. It's about 10 bucks per quart or so. Uh, so it's not super cheap, but we don't need a lot. And so that's the kind of the nice thing about it is you don't need a ton of it to get a tank painted. So let me pan back. I don't have a lot of room here. So I'm in this side of the fish room. I don't even have a place to put this stand right now on the other side until I get the tanks moved. But you can see here uh, kind of what it looks like. And I'm sorry again if it's a little bit tough to see. But this was one coat. And that's probably all I'm going to use because it's really not necessary to use more. My basement's not all that well lit, so any minor imperfections aren't really gonna show. Once I get the tanks in, if the lights are showing off imperfections, I'll just touch it up real quick. But you can see here, that's pretty much what we've used throughout the entire fish room. Uh, everywhere here, so it's the same stuff. This tank, this stand is gonna go on the other side of the fish room, obviously. So uh, again, you can see, uh, not a bad finish. I am definitely not a good painter. I just kind of slap this stuff on with a paintbrush. But there you have it. And so now this stand is pretty much ready to hold a couple 75 gallon tanks and that is going to be coming up pretty soon. All righty, once so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. Uh, maybe pointing out some tips. So if you're building a stand, you know what's, what to look out for. Again, if you, there are other videos on YouTube. This, my, the design that I'm using is not original. It's not something I came up with that I dreamed up. Uh, it's been out there. People have done it on YouTube before. Like I said, I just wanted to point out some things so that hopefully it would be a little bit helpful for you as you build a stand, especially if you're doing it for the first time. Now, in the future, what we're going to be doing is we're still working on phase two of the fish room build out. So be looking forward to seeing us get these 75 gallon tanks up and running, moving the fish around like I had mentioned in the previous video. So if you enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up, share it, like it, and subscribe. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Recording, recorded. Gotta get my microphone under my shirt so I don't look like a dork. I want to look like a dork today. Hey everybody, I'm a big old dork. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Let's go. Come on. Are you serious? Is it recording? <laughs>